Hey, let's get some analysis here on Intel's numbers from an analyst. Dan Berenbaum is an analyst for Auriga Securities. He has followed the chip sector for almost a decade and rates Intel a buy. Let me just get, uh, first of all, Dan, your initial thoughts on this. I mean, a beat on the bottom line, but also a beat on the revenue side. Yeah, beat on both the top line and bottom line compared to both our numbers and consensus. Uh, more importantly, I think people are looking at the guidance now. And the guidance is for a 14-week quarter, uh, but the guidance is basically for revenue to be uh, kind of flattish sequentially for the March quarter. And I think that's better than people were thinking, even given the 14-week quarter that's coming up. Were people set up here for a disappointment? And we saw the put volume soar ahead of this release. Uh, did they expect Intel to miss or at least not? to beat looking out to the next quarter? If you look at valuation, uh, clearly Intel's valuation is far below that of peers. If I look at uh, 2011 consensus estimates, uh, people expect earnings to be down for Intel in 2011, whereas for most of the rest of the semiconductor space, people expect earnings to be up in 2011. So I think clearly with all of the uh, tablet mania and ARM-based mania that you've heard about lately just coming off of Consumer Electronics Show, all that tablet hype where people expect Intel to be a loser, expectations were at the very least tempered. Hey, Dan, it's Julie here. What do you think that the Intel conference call is going to be like today? You think it'll be perhaps a little more fireworks than usual? Will the executives there get grilled more about, uh, you know, some of the consumer electronics, the tablets and smartphones like you're talking about? Oh, absolutely. There's going to be a lot of conversation around what Intel's strategy is for mobility, both smartphones and tablets. Uh, Intel's clearly late to the game in tablets. It'll be interesting now. I think there will be a lot of questions about Windows eventually running on ARM-based architectures. What'll be interesting is what manager says about finally being able to set up for uh, an Intel x86-based processor to run head-to-head -head in a similar environment to an ARM-based processor. We haven't really seen that yet. It's been a lot of he said, she said, and I think management's going to get a lot of questions about how they'll perform in the same environment uh, against ARM. And Dan, you actually think that Intel may ultimately benefit from the tablet craze, correct? Absolutely. I think that the more mobile devices that we get into the hands of more people, the more of a requirement you're going to have for centralized computing. You're, you're going to need more servers because any way you look at it, uh, a device that you put in somebody's hand is going to have lower power, uh, less processing power, that is, than a device uh, that, that sits on your desktop or sits centralized somewhere. Or that runs you're going the need cloud. More computing power. Exactly. You're, you're going to need that computing power in the cloud. Intel is very well positioned in servers, particularly against its primary rival, AMD. And Dan, what about Sandy Bridge? That, of course, is Intel's uh, chip that it recently introduced. I mean, what's your assessment of how it's been going so far and how much that is going to contribute to the company's revenue, even as it tries to diversify? Well, I think that Sandy Bridge is important, but I guess I see that as more evolutionary than revolutionary. You know, Intel has been uh, continually integrating functionality closer and closer to the processor. So, you know, as Intel moves forward with moving graphics onto the processor, uh, you know, that's obviously important. And one of the other things we should mention uh, off of this, when Intel is giving its guidance for 2011 in the press release, both capital spending and R&D are somewhat higher than people were thinking thinking certainly higher than, than we were thinking. You know, we'd been modeling uh, R&D in the $6.3 billion range for 2011, and Intel's guiding R&D to $7.3 billion. They're also guiding capital spending to $9 billion. Uh, that's up over this year. It was about okay. $5 billion and change. So clearly there's competition. Intel's feeling the Got pressure it. and needs to confront it. Hey, Dan, we got to run. Good to break it down with you. Dan Berenbaum over at Origo Securities.